questions, right? And then people tell me that they're seeking inner peace. So things like peace or things like love or things like freedom or things like happiness that is very vague. And I think, I don't think there's nobody who is not seeking that. Yeah. And depending on the value and belief and your desire of how you want to live life, sometimes people want things to be able to create that feeling. Others can be very minimalist and just seek for that feeling or others could be uh, some doing or doing things to express and connect with people to be able to feel that experience but but whether what the avenue is what people are seeking is an inner experience of feeling right and I mean, this is up to anybody, right? You can be somebody who really want to be um, known or who really want to be healthy, who really want to be forming a meaningful relationship, whatever that is. But what true for everybody is that ultimately through whatever the having or doing in this physical plane, because physical plane is a place of having and doing. We can say that I don't need to have anything, right? But that's not true because you need to have something, right? And then you can say, that, oh, I don't need to do too much, right? But you need to be doing something in order to function in the physical space-time reality because we have the body to move and we are living in the physical material world. So you would have something, right? And ultimately, what we are seeking is an inner experience, right? So somebody might want to have a lot of money because that's what drives that person. But having that a lot of money might allow people to do a lot of stuff. But ultimately, 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 what people are seeking is a sense of freedom, sense of peace, sense of uh, love, sense of uh, happiness, all that, right? You might be somebody who don't need a lot of stuff, but to be able to live a simple life, but you might be somebody who is seeking deep connection, right? Deep, why are we seeking deep connection? Because the same reason. So ultimately through the having and doing the physical life, which could be different degrees based on your desire, what people are commonly, universally, globally seeking is to create a feeling of happiness, feeling of freedom, feeling of peace, feeling of love. And the reason for that is because that is who we are. That's why the inner fundamental desire is to seek for that which who we already are. And then how do we how do we access that if we, I mean, even what, what do we mean by accessing who we already are, right? It means that to actually remove all the things that we are not. So in the inner peace chapter, right? The reason that I'm so excited about until the wall turn into a fire color <clears throat> is because this chapter six present the fifth agreement. Yeah, the fifth agreement is don't believe yourself and anybody else, but uh, learn to listen. We're going to explore this because, because this is my favorite agreement. We're going to come back. Well, I like being impeccable with the world too, but okay, that's, that is still um, agreement number one, right? Agreement number one is be impeccable with words because every single word that we speak is a gift. Every single word that we speak is a mode of communication to deliver the message through us. Agreement number two is don't take anything personally. Why does he say that? He say that because... Oh, let's come back to impeccable with the world. Uh, the reason that he's 
the be impeccable with words is because words nourishes us and also words makes us suffer. Yeah. So if we make some judgment or you come across something and then begin having an inner dialogue that is disempowering, we're using the power of the words against us, right? We're talking to ourselves all the time. So if we're talking to ourselves all the time and that constant talk is creating the model of the world, and that's like a chicken and an egg, right? The model of the world is our lens that we're wearing that is formed through our belief. And that pool of belief continues to create a same kind of inner dialogue. Now, if we are all doing that, it means that others are all doing that as well. That's why don't take anything personally is whatever that somebody tells us is based on their model of the world and it has zero to do with us. Let's say if somebody says, and you didn't like it, or sometimes people say that hurt me. Nobody can hurt us but ourselves, because what's happening in the specific moment when somebody says to us, and we felt hurtful, is that somebody said something, and we heard what they said, and then we interpret the way that we perceive the world and ourselves, and then we start forming the image, we start forming the meaning, we start forming the feeling, and you are saying that you hurt, right? So nobody can enter into your perception and choose, boom, I'm gonna press this button for you to feel something, right? We can only press the button inside. Then the other person who is saying that is saying based on their belief. So. The simple analogy that I like to make is that um, when two people are talking, there are actually four people in it, right? There are two people in each person. So don't make any assumption is related to this, right? When somebody says something or somebody is doing something, like we have this interpretation and the experience in our mind based, based on our perception and the perception and the interpretation and also false expectation. We start worrying about something or we start thinking about the uh, worst case scenario or we start assuming that this person is not liking me or this person, what all the thing, right? That comes from our past, present, full story or how we see ourselves, the world and life, right? That's why he said, don't make an assumption. Now, agreement four is do your best. I mean, that sounds like a simple thing, right? But doing your best, the way that I like to take the most that benefited me is to really understand that everyone is doing the best at the level of awareness that they're in. So when somebody right next to you is super rude and super mean, that person is doing the best. And if you reacted to that and frustrated that, you were just doing the best. Right. And then sometimes um, best is to not to have those stuff. We have the idea of what best is. And then people start saying, oh, that shouldn't be the best. I could have done it better. He could have done it better. He should, she should have done it better. All of us could have done it better. Right. But if you could have done it better, you could, you would have done it, but you didn't do it. So you did the best at the level of the awareness you are in, that's what it means. So what this is liberating is that when somebody, when you come across something mean or whatever, frustrating or uh, rude, you can just look at it, oh, this person is doing the best right now, right? And then just looking at that situation that way, Kind of stop creating that frustration. Yeah. So those are like a little revisiting of the agreement number one and number four, right? Now, agreement number five is don't believe yourself and anybody else 
and learn to listen. I mean, for the entire time, probably we all have been told, believe in yourself. <laughs> but he's saying, don't believe yourself, right? Because he's not saying don't believe in you, but he's saying don't believe all the inner dialogue that shows up in your mind because that inner dialogue, first of all, is not you. And that inner dialogue is based on the full story of you. So what I love the most, the single spot that I love the most about this chapter, Inner Peace, is that um, I have the book, but I'm listening to more of the audio. So he said, if you are done, if you are the one who is talking that lie, who is listening? Yeah, that's what he said. So it means that you cannot be the speaker and the listener at the same time. Somebody else is talking if you're able to listen to it. But if you're not able to listen to it, you're getting absorbed, misunderstanding that you're the one who is speaking. Yeah, I'm going to repeat this section multiple times because this single micro spot is what take all of us to transformation. That's why this, this module is so important. All the inner dialogues that you might have, right? When you're in your car, when you're in a shower, when you're having a coffee, right? Inner dialogue, I don't know how many, uh, I, I don't remember the number of thoughts that we think, but I present it in the morning and I don't, I'm not too much of the matrix data person, but it's been told that 70% uh, of the thoughts that we think are negative, 90% of the thoughts that we thought yesterday we think today, right? So all the inner dialogue, there's a lot of inner dialogues in your head, right? You see something and in the next moment you're talking to yourself something, right? And there, I, I found that there's different levels in the volumes and the clarity in the inner dialogue. Something that boom comes right in front of you, or something that kind of, you know, bubbling up in the back of the head, like a whispering quieter inner dialogue, right? So if we learn to listen, learning to listen means that you become the full observant and the noticer of the voice in the head. When you become the observant, noticer, and the listener of the voice in your head, what that does is that you realize, oh, there's a voice here that's coming up. I'm listening. Who is talking? But if we are not listening, we misunderstand and assume that I'm the one who is talking to myself. I'm the one who is repeating the voice. Yeah, this is a huge key where I mean, we are on the same page, right? We're a spiritual being living in the physical body and gifted with intellect intellectual mind is the conversation that we're having yeah and sometimes in the manifestation place you know there is in an energetics healing space there is this terminology called i don't know how this emerge <laughs> blocking there's a blockage somewhere right something is blocking me from expanding something is blocking me from moving forward sometimes we say i'm blocking myself yeah the moment you say i'm blocking myself that is a limiting internal dialogue yeah then when if you say i am blocking myself i mean who is the i that you're saying i if you are a spiritual soul do you even say to yourself, I am blocking myself? Who is the I, right? So can you see that this a little int intricacy of it, right? So sometimes 
it's good to think and believe that okay i am a spiritual being and i have the mind and i have the body in that sentence it resonates that i am the spirit soul but then when we move away from that sentence on a day-to-day -day basis the i start becoming the mind for many people the inner dialogue the thoughts that we're thinking becomes the i then you get stuck in the prison of the full story because you're identifying yourself as somebody who you are not that's why people are stuck in their negativity and the blockage that people are choosing to be in by choosing to identify themselves as their mind so do not believe yourself do not believe the words that you tell yourself negatively yeah now the words that is positive and empowering those are not you actually either because those are just a concept yeah but the choosing of those words that gives you a sense of expansion can alter the frequency in the mind and the level of identity to who you are. That's why we want to choose that, right? That choosing of the identity, the thoughts and the feelings and the belief is a conceptual choice, but the identity is not who you essentially are, but temporarily you're creating the art to enjoy this physical life. So don't believe yourself means that every single words that we tell ourselves, we speak outwards, every single thing that we hear, don't believe anybody else, everybody tells you, if you don't like it, if it doesn't, if that doesn't feel makes us feel expansive, it means that it's coming from the full story. It's that simple. If that, um, yeah. But also, there's a little layer in when we are not feeling. If you have a self doubt, and somebody tells us that actually makes us grow, but it feels uncomfortable. Sometimes it doesn't feel expansive because of the fear that we're in. Yeah, but but simple. If you make it simple, if everything that allows us to feel expansive is what we want to take, and anything that makes us feel contracted or resistant, we want to really learn to listen. And by learning to listen, this is what he, what he said, though. Don't believe yourself don't believe anybody else but learn to listen and just by learning to listening you will discover that inner peace because the inner peace do not belong to the having do not belong to the doing but belongs to the internal experience of the quality of the thoughts that we're choosing in relation to what we're doing and having. It has nothing to do with doing and having. It has everything to do with the quality of the thinking plus how much are we being the listener of our thoughts.